Films are not self-enclosed entities, but make statements about the world in which we live. Films create meaning through the use of symbols, metaphors, and motifs, which are repeated techniques, objects, or thematic ideas. Symbols and metaphors have been used in a variety of different ways throughout cinematic history. If you look at these four examples, you will see that symbolism and visual metaphors are used in each one of these moments of film. If you look at the upper left corner, you'll see a screenshot from The Passion of Joan of Arc, a silent film. You will see that Joan, otherwise known as Shen, is imprisoned and within that jail cell you'll see on the window the bars on the window look like a crooked cross that's interesting because she is imprisoned by a religious leader that crooked cross represents the fallacy of that religious leadership if you look down in the lower right corner you'll see a screenshot from vertigo in which judy scotty the protagonist's lover she is shown in shadow. Well, why is that? Because she is concealing the truth behind a scheme in which she's been a part of this past year. In allegorical films, plot events take on meanings that are greater than the function within the logic of the narrative. Sam Peckinpah's The Wild Bunch, for example, can be interpreted as an allegory of American militarism in Vietnam. Upon its release, it raised a lot of eyebrows due to its excessive violence and callous attitudes of the protagonists within the film. Another example would be Superman. There is a lot of allegory and symbolism used in Superman that parallels the character of Superman to Jesus, even down to the colors of Superman's outfit as compared to historical paintings and illustrations of Jesus and his attire. Not to mention the parallels between both individuals in their personality and within their actions. Both individuals come from other worlds. Both individuals use good to fight evil. And both can perform actions and have abilities that are beyond the capacity of human beings. Contemporary film narratives are often highly intertextual, referring to previous cultural works, whether in the cinema, television, or other arts. Joseph Conrad's novelette, Heart of Darkness, tells a story of an individual that travels up the river into the depths of the African jungle to find a Mr. Kurtz living among the savages of that jungle. In the 70s, Coppola made a film called Apocalypse Now that tells a very similar story and has similar thematic elements to it. However, this time it's a soldier that's traveling up the river in Vietnam into the depths of the Cambodian jungle to find a Colonel Kurtz who apparently has gone mad living amongst the savage natives of that jungle. Another example of this would be Shakespeare's Macbeth and Kurosawa's Throne of Blood. Obviously, Macbeth is a play written by Shakespeare in the early 1600s, and it tells a story of an individual who rises into power, becomes king, and eventually is destroyed because of a tragic flaw. Kurosawa uses that similar story in Throne of Blood. However, instead of it taking place in what we now know as Scotland, it takes place in feudal Japan. Both discuss similar themes throughout it. Both are obviously tragedies involving a tragic hero and a tragic flaw. Films depend on a willing suspension of disbelief that allows audiences to believe temporarily in the events and characters of the film's fictional narratives. That's why movies like The Matrix and Star Wars are successful, because for those couple of hours that the film lasts, we believe that these events are actually happening. Sometimes filmmakers don't want you to suspend your disbelief completely, so they use reminders like alienation effects to point out that you're just watching a movie and we see this in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Annie Hall, and even Inglorious Bastards.